Dearest, please don't be angry when I tell you that you seek resolutions and explanations because you're young. But you will understand this one day. My name is Phyllis Nage, and I'm the screenwriter of Carol. The screenplay is adapted from a novel by Patricia Highsmith called The Price of Salt, which was her second novel. She wrote it after Strangers on a Train and before The Talented Mr. Ripley, but it was published under a pseudonym. So it was many years later she republished it under her own name uh, and retitled it Carol. Tell me you know what you're doing. I knew Patricia Highsmith pretty well over the last decade of her life. This project didn't come to me until I think two years after she died. There's a burden of responsibility that you feel to just not screw it up. And so of course I felt that profoundly for about a year. And then it started to annoy me and I thought, go away. You know, I, this is not going to be a useful script if there's an over-reverence of the author. Once I understood that, then it was fairly easy to think of the correct structural approach. The chance to actually just engage those characters in behavior, and that behavior becoming the political act, as it were, um, was the thing that was very exciting to me as a dramatist. Forcing contact before the hearing, you risk inviting further scrutiny concerning your conduct. My conduct? Jesus Christ. I'm a mother, for God's sake. Of course, Carol explores other issues, but above all, it is a very simple story about how it feels to fall in love. I want to know, I think, I mean, I want to ask you things, but I'm not sure that you want that. Ask me things, please. There is no judgment of those characters, no matter who they are. That goes for the husband, the boyfriend, um, and anyone else who may actually be in the way of our two protagonists. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Are you going to stay here with Abby over Christmas? Are you going to stay with the shop girl in there? Huh? People are very much behaving in accordance with their hearts, which is why you might end up understanding them, even if you don't like what they're doing. I can't explain it. I just... What? You got one hell of a crush on this woman is what? You're like a schoolgirl. I do not. I just like her is all. I'm fond of anyone I can really talk to. Nice. The other great thing about the novel, which excited me, was its radical presentation of what it takes to be a good mother. Now, I'm no martyr. I have no clue what is best for me. But I do know and I feel it in my bones what is best for my daughter. Now, I want visits with her arch. I don't care if they're supervised. I just want them to be regular. The notion that difficult choices have to be made in order to spare your own child a lifetime of misery because you're so miserable. Being forced to be someone you're not seemed quite extraordinary for a book written in the late 40s, early 50s, and still seems pretty um, radical today. So that's the deal. I won't, I cannot negotiate anymore. You take it or leave it. But if you leave it, we go to court. And if we go to court, it'll get ugly. And we're not ugly people, oh, <laughs> Falling in love that deeply is about generosity. And if people take anything away from this film, is that it reminds them there's a time when all of us go through this. And I want them to be moved by the experience of having to fight for, for, your, for your love in a very pure sense. I...